Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem arranging coins. And don't let the problem fool you, even though it's marked as easy, I would definitely say it's more of a medium question, especially because there's multiple solutions and some of them are very tricky to come up with. So we're given n coins and we wanna build a staircase with these coins. And the staircase is going to be built where the first row is gonna have one coin, the second row is gonna have two coins, the third row is gonna have three coins, etc., etc. But the question is, with a limited number of coins, how many complete rows can we build? In this case, we built two complete rows, but the third one we were not able to complete because of one missing coin. So in this case, we would return two because there's two complete rows we were able to build. Now, your first instinct might be to come up with the brute force solution, which I think is roughly big O of N, because suppose, you know, we had a number like five, or let's say even 10 in this case, we would say, okay, we're gonna build the first row, minus one, now we have nine. We're gonna build the second row, minus two, now we have seven. We're gonna build the third row, minus three, now we have four. We're gonna build the fourth row, minus four. You know, we didn't go negative, so we were able to build the fourth row, but now we don't have anything left. So in total, we were only able to build four rows and that's what we would return. So that's the really simple brute force solution. That's kind of why this is an easy problem. But there's a much harder solution, which is actually gonna be big O of log n. And if you're wondering how are we gonna get that solution, you might be thinking, okay, it must be binary search, right? Yep, we're gonna do binary search on this, but figuring that out is very, very difficult because it first requires a math formula that you really have to know you most likely won't be able to come up with it yourself unless you're a genius mathematician like Gauss was because the math formula is called Gauss's formula. So first let's learn that and then let's learn how we can apply that math formula to the problem to get a binary search solution which will be much more efficient than the linear time solution. Okay, so suppose we had numbers from one to a hundred. How could we add these numbers up quickly. Well, one way would be just to add them sequentially. One plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, up until a hundred, right? That's one way. Adding them up in that way would be big O of n time. But did you know that there's actually a way to add these numbers in big O of one time with a nice formula called Gauss's formula? First, notice how if we take the first number in this series and the last number, they both add up to 101. Then uh, notice when we shift by one here, we're getting a, a value that's one value larger than the previous value here, right? That's plus one. But when we go from here and then shift left, we're getting a smaller value by one. So that's a minus one. But we did plus one here and then minus one here. That means we didn't make any changes really because two plus 99 is also equal to 101. And that's gonna be true for all of the numbers. Three matched with a certain value over here, 98 is gonna add up to 101. And every value all the way up until the middle values, 50 and 51, right? These are the middle values are gonna also add up to 101. So what we found here is that if we split half of the values here and then half of the values here, we have how many pairs? In this case, we have 100 values, right? So that means we have 50 pairs of values, right? And each of those pairs of values is gonna be exactly 101. So the formula is 50 times this is gonna be, I think, 5,050. So what would be a generic formula for that? Well, we got this 50 by taking the number of values divided by two because that's how many pairs we have. And that 101 value we got was what's the largest value and what's the smallest value uh, added together is gonna be 101. But if you start at a one value, you can pretty much just say the big, you know, the number of values n in this case plus one. So the formula is n plus one times uh, n divided by two. That's the formula in this case if we start at one and you know the values are sequential, right? And just so you know that the same formula would actually work for an odd number of values. So in this case, if we have three values, it would also work because here we have one plus three, that's gonna be four. And then the middle value is always gonna be half of 
you know, the pairs of values. So the formula would still work, you know, if we had n over 2 times n plus 1. In this case, we would have 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5 times n plus 1, which is 4. That works because we have one pair uh, of values that will be equal to 4, but then that middle value will be half of that, right? That's where the 1.5 comes from. So just to clear that math portion up. So now we have a way to calculate a series of values in O of 1 time. How is that actually going to help us? And even this step is not simple, which is why I think this problem is difficult. Somehow we can use that to apply binary search to this. Because in this problem, what they tell us is n is always going to be greater than zero. That means we have to have at least one row in this problem, right? But what's the max number of rows we could possibly have? Well, who knows? But we do know that a technical upper bound is n itself, right? n is the upper bound for how many rows we could have. Because let's say we have 10 coins. Well, we, the maximum number of rows we could have is also 10. Uh, and it's actually technically going to be less than 10, but this is still a uh, upper bound, which we can use for our binary search because we know we have to have at least one coin in each of these rows. So we have our boundaries, right? Our left boundary is going to be one. Our right boundary is going to be N. So that's how the binary search is going to work. But you know, now let's suppose we calculated the midway point, right? We know that this is the minimum. This is the maximum number of rows we uh, could build. So to take an example, let's continue with n equals 5. So suppose we're doing binary search like this, right? Our series of numbers is 1 through 5. We calculate the midway point, which is 3. And now our question is, can we complete at least three rows? Because that's what this three represents, the number of rows, remember? So with three rows, how many total coins would we need to complete three rows? Well, that's where our math formula comes in, right? Remember, n divided by 2 times n plus 1. 1, when we have 3, it's going to be 3 divided by 2, uh, 3 plus 1, that's going to be 6, right? So 6 coins is how many we would need to complete 3 rows, but we only have n equals 5 coins. So clearly we don't have enough coins to complete this row. So this is no longer a possibility and also any values to the right of it are also no longer a possibility. So what we would do is take our right pointer and then now reassign it to be equal to two and then continue our binary search. Now suppose from these two, we uh, our new midway point is one. In that case, we're gonna say how many coins would we need to complete one row? Well, we could apply our formula again, but we know that it's going to be one coin. Uh, we have five coins, right? So we have enough coins to complete one row. But we want to know what's the maximum number of rows we could complete, right? So is this the maximum? That's the question I'm asking you. Well, it's a possibility. For now, our result is going to be equal to one. But can we do better? So we're going to cross one out. Now we're going to check, are there bigger values to the right of it? So uh, now this is the only value we have left, clearly. And then we're going to see that, yes, 2 divided by 2 times 2 plus 1 is going to be, I think, 3. So we need 3 coins to complete 2 rows. That makes sense. And we have enough coins. We have 5 coins. So, yes, we have enough. And then 2 is going to be our result, which is what they had in this problem anyway. So now you can see how we solved this problem in log n time. That's the solution I'm going to be coding up, but actually there is a better solution than that as well. There's a technically big O of one solution, which is a math formula. Think about it. What we had was n divided by 2, and I'm actually going to use a different variable. Let's say r is the number of complete rows that we need, right? So r divided by 2 times r plus 1. This is the number of coins we would need to complete r rows. So how many rows could we complete? r is going to be the return value in this case. Well, we have exactly n coins, right? So literally, in the, with this math formula, all we have to do is solve for r, and then we have our solution. Uh, but make sure when you do solve for r, you round down. Because suppose we had something like 5.5 uh, .5 rows, right? We can complete 5.5 .5 rows. Well, what does that tell us? Well, in this case, we can complete 
2.67 rows, right? Basically what we're saying is we can complete two rows and the third one is gonna be unfinished. So we round down, right? And same, in this case, if we got a 5.5, we would have to round down. But this is not the solution I'm gonna be coding up because it's kind of you know just a math solution and I'd rather just show you the actual coding solution for binary search. Okay, so now let's code it up. And the good thing is once you figure out that complicated math stuff, which uh, let's be honest, it's not the type of thing you'd probably figure out by yourself in an interview. Hopefully your interviewer would help you with that. Uh, but let's set up the binary search. Like I said, left is one, right is N. The result is initially gonna be set to zero, but we wanna find the maximum number of rows that we can complete with N coins. So uh, writing our binary search, we're gonna do it while left is less than or equal to right. We wanna consider all valid possibilities. We're going to calculate the midway point pretty simply by just taking left plus right, dividing it by two. In Python, you need two slashes to do integer division, which is what we're doing here. And then uh, with mid, mid is basically the row that we're considering. It could be three, for example. So with three rows, how many coins would we need to complete exactly three rows? Well, let's calculate that. So the number of coins we would need with our math formula is going to be mid divided by two. And in this case, uh, we're not doing integer division because we do want to have potentially decimals, right? That's important for that Gauss's math formula. So in Python, one slash means decimal division. And we're going to multiply that uh, with m or mid plus one, just like I showed in the math formula. So there's two possibilities. One is that the number of coins is greater than we have, right? We have n coins, but if we need this many coins to complete this many rows, that means we can't complete this many rows. So what we would do is then shift our right pointer to be mid minus one because we want to consider all possible rows that are uh, less than this one. Okay, but the other case is actually two cases. If the number of coins is less than n or the number of coins is exactly equal to n, which means that we have enough coins, n is enough to build this many rows. So this is a possible solution, right? Uh, then we can uh, do that, right? We can say result is equal to mid. Well, remember we wanna find the maximum number of rows, right? How many rows can we complete? So we're gonna take the max of mid and the max of the current result and then you know do that. But also don't forget to update your left pointer in this case. Now we wanna consider all possibilities that are greater than mid. So we're gonna say left is equal to mid plus one. And after all that is said and done, the only thing you have to do is return uh, the result, which is gonna be the maximum number of rows that we can complete in log n time. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.